Hello and welcome to Noel's Retro Lab. Today we're going to be looking at a very popular computer, especially in Europe, the Commodore Amiga 500. This one in particular is working perfectly fine, but as you can see here, it's really, really dirty. And more than dirty, it's just very yellowed with age. So we're going to be doing some retro brighting, and I figured that way I can show you my favorite way of doing retro brighting, especially in the middle of the winter, like we are right now. So we have a lot of work to do with this. Let's get started. Before we start, I wanted to take a few pictures just so we have a frame of reference at the end when we're done with it. And yeah, wow, this is filthy. Okay, let's open it up and see what we can do. Oh, it looks like there's some rust in there, more than I was expecting from the top. It even looks like somebody cleaned it before and you know, got rid of some of it. And here's the beautiful board. And with the whole family, we have Denise, Paula, and Gary, along with the CIA, of course, and none other than Fat Agnes. It's a little dusty, so let's clean it up with a brush and apply some compressed air. Much better this way. Before we can do anything with the case, we definitely need to clean it well. It's uh, it's pretty disgusting once you get close up and you see all the dirt in places. So yeah, we need to do a lot of scrubbing. There's even some pen color pencil or marker or something there. And then we have this, which is the typical screw that comes from the back and it pokes through the case. I'm not sure we'll be able to do anything about that. Um, so we'll see. So my standard approach for this is to rinse it, apply some multi-cleaner, scrub it really, really well, and then apply some baking soda and scrub the whole case with a wet rag to remove all the little bits of dirt. I finished washing the case but it's still very yellow as we suspected. We, we don't have any of those marks, but yeah, it's, it's very, very yellow and you can really see there the difference. So let's do some retro brighting here. The keys are filthy, so we definitely need to take them out. We use the key removal tool and we carefully separate the springs to put them back later. We need to be careful with those extra long keys because they have that wire underneath. So I use this small screwdriver to separate the wire and pop the key out. Now we need to clean the keys. So I use that same window cleaner we used earlier on the case and put it in the rag and scrub each of the keys carefully to remove all the grease and grime. Here we have the keys that have been cleaned up. And yeah, they're pretty yellow. You can compare that, for example, to, well, the best thing would be to compare it to the back of another white key. And you can immediately see the difference. So it's actually more than it shows in the video. And it's not even the white keys that are very noticeable. It's even noticeable with the brownish, more brown keys, even though it's not as noticeable. You see maybe there, see the difference in shade. And really the worst of all is the space key. The space key is pretty yellow because you get a lot of sun, but then apparently had this sticker. So here you see what the real color was and what it is right, right now, so. Yeah, we definitely need to do some retro brighting on these. So today is December 26th in northern Spain, and we're having an unusually warm day with uh, about 13 degrees Celsius and sunny. So this is perfect for the retro brighting that I like to do. I like to apply this cream, which you can buy at hair salons. It's a 40 volume hydrogen peroxide, and I dilute it a little bit with water, mix it all together, and then apply it generously over all of the case. Most of the time online, you'll see retro brighting guides that recommend starting this way and then covering up the cases with some kind of plastic wrap. I 
actually have tried that in the past and I have not gotten very good results. It's very easy for the cream underneath to dry out. It ends up causing streaking in the plastic and just pretty horrible results overall. So my favorite way that seems to give me reliable results is to apply this cream, not put any plastic on top, but instead come back every 30 minutes, maybe depending on how much sun you have, and then apply the cream again, or even apply a more diluted version. So you know, mostly water with whatever amount of cream you had and just apply that over and just make sure that it stays wet all day long. So I like this best in summer days because you have many hours of sunlight, but I like it in cloudy summer days, which I know some people say, oh, I can't do any retrobiting today in England because it's cloudy. Well, actually, I think that's the best time to do it. So if you haven't tried that, uh, give it a try. Now it's time for the keys. I use hydrogen peroxide, the regular kind you can find in a pharmacy. Put all the keys in a Ziploc bag and fill up the bag with peroxide. This stuff is not nearly as potent as the 40 volume cream that we used before, but you still want to watch out not to spill this all over your clothes. Seal it and ready to go. And now we put it out in the sun and wait. We can flip it a couple of times to make sure that all the keys get sun evenly, but that's about it. Pretty low maintenance. So this one is kind of weird. This is what was in the trapdoor expansion. And it looks like there's no way to see what it is. There are no screws, there are no tabs. There's just those soldered points. Um, I wonder why it's so sealed in. So I think we need to get the soldering iron to pry it open. Yeah, so it's probably a memory expansion and uh, maybe a real-time clock. I had a look at this card and it is indeed a 512 expansion RAM and a real-time clock uh, powered or the clock, the date is held by this battery. So one of the problems that you have sometimes with these kind of expansion cards is this battery. Uh, after this many years, they often start leaking and they can corrode the, the board itself and damage the circuitry. So fortunately, this looks really clean. I doubt the battery is still working, but it hasn't damaged anything. The, the board looks great. So we might have gotten here in the nick of time. As a quick test, we can see what kind of voltage we have on the battery. So if it was brand new, it should be 3.6. And yeah, we get two. 1.25, so that's definitely not enough to power the clock, but you know, it looks like it hasn't done any damage, so this is good news. As we saw earlier, the RF shielding was pretty rusty, so I'm going to scrub it down to restore it completely. Some people say the RF shielding is not really needed in the Amigas. Some other people claim it is. We might as well do it and leave it as new. First, I start with some sandpaper and water just to remove the rust. This is what it's supposed to look like after you remove the rust. It's going to be black, but it's going to be smooth. And we do the same thing with the underside. Once we've eliminated the rust and let it dry, we can apply this galvanizing zinc spray. This protects the metal from getting rusty again, and it gives it a you know, metal silvery finish. I apply coating more or less uniformly and then I do a cross pattern and this dries pretty quickly so I'll come back here in half an hour and apply a second coating. And then I'll do the same thing on the inside as well. And while I'm doing all of this, uh, about every half an hour I go outside and I pass a brush with the diluted cream all over the case just to prevent it from drying out. Yeah, the day I'm doing this retro writing is kind of a pain to have to do this, but I find that this is how you get the consistently good results. The shielding looks really good. Um, it's, it's not exactly like it was before, before it was shiny, but this looks really good. And most importantly, it's protected from ever rusting again. So it's definitely what we were going for. And it's going to look really good whenever somebody opens up 
the computer to do anything. So they, they look fantastic. So here we go. These are the keys after we've had them sitting outside for a day and they're definitely better than they were, but they're, they're not perfect. You can tell there's a difference between the bottom and the top. So ideally, if we wanted them to, if we wanted to get them to hundred percent, we should probably put it back another day or maybe even two in a summer day, maybe in one day would have been fine. But there's always the risk when you do that, that something is going to go wrong. Sometimes you start getting splotches because of uneven exposure, or sometimes, I don't know, it seems like the plastic reacts in different ways. So I think this is going to look pretty good when I assemble it. So I'm not going to risk it. And I'm just going to put it back together and see how it looks once it's all put back together in the keyboard. So here's the assemble keyboard and overall it's really good. You can see some yellowing still in there. Same thing with there, there's some yellowing. Overall is much better than it was. And the space key that we did in a different way, this is, this actually stands out as being definitely wider than the rest. And that weird spot that it had in there is definitely gone. So I think the space key is back to its original color. So I think this looks really good and it will look perfect once we put everything back together in the case. And finally, the case, wow, what a difference. This is much, much better than it was before. It's almost the original color. I think there's a slight hint of yellow in, but that's totally fine. Um, when you look at the back, you can compare against that. It's very, very similar. So, you know, unfortunately this stands out even more but there's nothing really easy we can do to do that. If we try to put putty and sand it down, then the surface is definitely going to look different. So I think that's just gonna stay that way. So I think we should just reassemble everything and see how it looks put together. So after all this work, I wanted to compare images because when you're working on this, sometimes you just kind of forget how it was at the beginning. So here's a picture of how it was before we started. And here's a picture of how it is now. <laughs> yeah, that's quite the difference. Let's actually see a nice transition between the two. Oh yeah. Yeah, let's do that one again. Wow. I would say this was a very successful restoration. So there you go. What a difference from how the Amiga 500 started to how it is right now. It looks so much better. So I hope you enjoy seeing the process and some of the techniques that we used. If you have your own Amiga 500, it's something that you may have to do yourself. Unfortunately, this yellowing is something that happens a lot with Amigas. So something to watch out for. If you find this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. And as usual, subscribe to the channel. Until next video, see you then.